There's been mud on my soul There's been anger inside me There's still unforgiven deeds That now it's time to free I've been trapped inside so long Don't remember how to live How much of life has passed me by As I slept inside my dreams Oh yes, sip the waters too Let them wash all over you is rich the depiction is beautiful and the faith of the masses in that culture in that heritage is so resolute is so deep that the sculpture has almost become the backbone of this country not just the spiritual not just the religious the moral the scientific the physical the intellectual every aspect is so profound every aspect is so esoteric as if a mystery wrapped in enigma the more you explore it the more it ushers us into new uncharted realities the heritage includes temples pictures statues rituals rivers mountains dresses songs and so on one of the famous 
pictures in the same heritage is known as kalyan sundara you must have seen this picture it's a beautiful picture this one this is depicted in most of the indian temples this is a beautiful picture of marriage of shiva there is a shiva and there is parvati and the officiating priest is brahma so brahma is offering parvati to shiva they also show vishnu and lakshmi offering parvati to shiva so these are the different pictures they are also known as pani grahan murti or vaivahik murti but the name which is more prevalent is kalyana sundara the marriage of shiva and parvati is very famous and who is the priest in this marriage brahma he is offering parvati to shiva baba says this is the memorial of confluence age shiva is the husband of husbands but it was not an easy journey for parvati to reach shiva the journey is not completed in one birth it took her two births to reach him and it took souls 84 births almost to reach shiva so this story of kalyana sundara the beautiful marriage the marriage is very very weird it's not an ordinary marriage the marriage has got few specialities it is off the track marriage let us first dive deep into the story and then come to the theory and the philosophy and the practical dharna part of it it is shown that there is a lady sati she is in head or heels in love with shiva though she has not seen him anywhere she heard about him through sages but as is the typical love story her father is strongly against this shankar rather he hates him and he thinks him uncultured uncivilized uneducated who doesn't belong to cultured society he looks at he looks down on at him rather and this sati is born as a daughter to this prajapita daksh who is the mouth born again progeny of brahma it is shown and he is the head of the humanity he presides over the world with its with his own rules and regulations so there are so many plots and subplots in the story coming to the crux of it so this her father doesn't want her to marry so he arranges a swayam or a marriage ceremony for her but purposefully deliberately he doesn't invite shiva so she is standing with a garland and when he doesn't find shiva she doesn't garland other 
persons who have come there. Radha, she throws the garland in the air and invokes Shiva. And that garland falls in the around the neck of Shiva. And she gets married against the will of her father. And she goes to stay to Kailash along with Shankar. Her father is always unhappy. He tries various means and methods and devices to turn her mind. But she is hell-bent on marrying Shiva. Another step to insult Shiva was to establish, was to create a sacrificial fire, a great yagya. He invites everyone, her father, but again purposefully does not invite Shiva. Sati comes and she sees that my husband is not invited and he is nowhere to be seen and she feels insulted and she jumps into the sacrificial fire and burnt to ashes. It is shown that this Sati takes rebirth as Parvati, who is a daughter of Himalaya, Himvat. And she grows up. Now begins the Tapasya. Now in this birth, she does great Tapasya to win the mind of Shiva. But it is shown that after the death of Sati, Shiva is mad. He is carrying the dead body for six months and moving here and there. And wherever her pieces of body fell, they become 52 Shakti Peets all over India. And then he got withdrawn. He lost interest in the world. Love lawn. Dejected. Unhappy. And he got lost in his Samadhi. He had three favorite places to do tamad, Samadhi. Which are they? One is forest, second mountain, and third funeral ground. These are the three favorite places. These are good places to do tapasya. Mountains, we are in mountains. Forest, we have vicinity of forests here. We can retire into the woods anytime. And third, funeral ground which you can visit time and again. So these are the best places for tapasya because these places do not have human beings there around, full of silence, full of solitude. Deep in the woods, I feel I am alive. That's a beautiful song. Hills and mountains, you must have heard that song. Hills and mountains and valleys. Deep in the woods, I feel I am alive. So, this Parvati is trying to please. But there is yet another point there. There is a demon called Tarkasura. So, he has got boon from Brahma. And because of that boon, he is creating upheaval on earth. Creating great devastations. So, it is said that only Shiva's son can kill this Tarkasura. But Shiva is lost in his tapas, tapas, Samadhi. And Parvati is doing Tapasya here. So, there is no way of their marriage. Because Shiva is not interested in anything now. He is depressed. <laughs> After his first experience. So, those other deities, they create a plot, they hatch a plot and they send that Kamadev to disturb his tapasya. But he opens his third eye and burns this guy. But then again his wife comes, this Kamadev, she, she implores, she pleads. He says, okay, we will look at it, what to do. Later on, he is born in the, when Vishnu comes as Krishna, he is a grandchild and something like that. So forget that. So, 
So somehow he agrees to marry Parvati, but then he says, I will first test her. So again, the testing, the trials, he sends those Saptarishis to dissuade Parvati from marrying Shiva. Also, he himself comes as an old ascetic, disguised as an old ascetic, and he vilifies himself. He insults himself to see what Parvati does, but she is resolute, unflinching in her resolve. And ultimately, they both marry. Shiva agrees with all his terms and conditions. But the marriage is unique because this marriage is attended by all the ugly people, the lame, the deaf, the maimed, the disabled, ugly looking people. So this marriage procession, Shiv Ki Bharat, is very unique. It is not like the marriage of Brahma or marriage of Vishnu, which is who are considered cultured deities. This is a very uncultured, uncivilized, <laughs> aboriginal marriage. So, it is shown that all those people accompany. So, this is the story. Yeah, the story is done. Now the married life, we will discuss some other day. <laughs> so they, then that Kartike is born and that he kills that Tarkasura. That's it. End of the Tarkasura. So what Baba says? Every Parvati is the soul. And Parvati cannot achieve Shiva so easily. She has to undergo the series of sadhana, tapasya. She is doing tapasya in silence, in solitude. She is known as Apparna. She is known as Gauri. Gradually she gave up food. She started surviving only on leaves. She was called Aparna. She is Girja. She is Uma. Different names to this Shakti. Hmm? So different names have been given to this Shakti worship in India. So, without tapasya, you cannot marry Shiva. Again and again we see in Murli, Baba says, you see your own face, what you are. Shiva is Satyam, Shivam and Sundaram. He is full of truth. Unless and until you are full of Satyam, you cannot marry him. If there is an iota of untruth in you, if there is an iota of falsehood in you, how can you marry him which is pure truth? Who is the ocean of truth? Who is the ultimate truth? Who is the only truth? Who is the one and the only truth? If you want to seek him, if you want to come to him, you have to destroy all the untruth of your lives. All the lies... All the hypocrisy, all the self-deception. Agree that I am here. In last Sunday's Murli Baba said, third type of purity is the purity of heart. And what is that? Honesty. Honesty of your Purusharth. What I am doing? This is what my Purusharth is. Baba, it is still it is still so rickety, so fluctuating, so unstable. I want to stabilize it. He is Shivam. How much you are full of Shubhavna, pure wishes, good feelings for each and every one. You cannot have Grina dislike for any human being. Even if he is Ravan, Kans, Jarasand, anybody, demon. How much beauty you are carrying, the beauty of divine virtues within you. What are your feelings for the person who hates you, who insults you, who talks against you, who criticizes you, who backbites you, who casts aspiration on, asper aspersions on you? 
our feelings change. We love all those people who praise us. We love to go near those people. But the moment we notice that somebody doesn't talk nicely about me or rather he talks nicely in front of me but behind my back, he talks against me. Your feelings change. Look at Baba. He has same feeling for everyone. Because he is detached. So unless and until you become Sundaram like him, you cannot marry Shiva. So the very sadhana, the very tapasya is of Satyam and Shiva and Sundaram. To let the divine beauty enter the life. Let us become intrinsically divine and beautiful. The real beauty is within. Outside beauty would fade away, would wither away. So she did tapasya, not just tapasya, she had to undergo tests, she was tested. People came and they vilified Shiva in front of her, but she was undaunted. People came and they started blaming or abusing or insulting Shiva in front of Parvati, but she was unmoved. Such unflappable stage of the mind. No matter what the world says, you continue in your path of Tivra Purushat, of intense effort. Because you know that Shiva likes this. Baba says so many times in Murlis, those children who are extremely pure, I love them too much. But if the very purity and the very foundation of Brahmacharya is faltering. How can you reach him? <coughs> so, we are souls, we are Parvatis. This life is not meant for cheap entertainments and cheap and the sensual enjoyments of this world. This life is to is a life of burning. This life is a life of tapasya. This life is a life of intense tapasya, where each moment you are awake, you are alert, where each moment you know what is the purpose of my life. You sleep and yet you are not sleeping. You are awake even at night. How can you sleep? Baba used to stay awake the whole night. You sleep because you have forgotten what you have to achieve. The time is so less, the time is now. So many things have to be done. What have we done? It's only when we come here in Madhuvan that slightly the spark is ignited. Again it gets extinguished. You know the coal, the pieces of coal. They need prodding by a stick or they need air so that they reignite, rekindled. So become a burning live charcoal, a coal, chingari and ignite yourself. When you remain ignited, you ignite the world. If you are half ignited, how can you ignite the world? The world is suffering. There is so much darkness, utter darkness, darkness of vices. Even Brahmins are not stable. The atmosphere is so powerful. The vices are so ferocious. The force is tempestuous. To remain stable in this unstable world is a great art. Without tapasya it is not possible. Without that powerful Amritvela it is not powerful. It is not possible. Without giving up all those luxuries. Without going into deep silence, it is not possible. Without tasting the nectar of solitude, it is not possible. 
without going into the cave of introversion it is not possible so if you want to marry shiva you have to pay the price marriage with shiva is not so cheap hmm it's no entertainment you might stand with a garland but you will never come because you are not fit survival of the fittest darwin's theory the unfit would get phased out So the first criteria is tapasya and the second criteria is you have to undergo trials and tribulations you will be tested tests papers obstacles hindrances stumbling blocks everything would come you will have to pass through everything then only you can marry him that is the second thing third who can attend this marriage this is a unique marriage everyone can attend this marriage but then depends it depends where you stand if you have passed the test and you are passed with honor baba says you will be very near to me if you are what you want to become brides or you want to become those who are attendants of the bride if you don't pass with honor you will just become an attendant in attendant also some attendants are close some are very far away so where you stand so the will should be resolute the will should be very strong forget the world i don't want anything of this world so me vivekananda has said i want those people few people who can just stand here in the line and they say except god we have no one in this world whom we call our own hundred such comma and the world is transformed hundred such pure brahmacharis hundred such pure souls pure to the core and the world would get transformed so the world transformation needs purity just two powers transformation of the world needs power of purity and power of yoga that's it it doesn't need military power it doesn't need physical power it doesn't need intellectual power it doesn't need financial economical power just two powers the power of yoga and power of purity so increase these two power within you then you become eligible to marry shiva he is ready all the time the bride groom is ready here comes the bride groom but the brides they come and they run away they come and they run away sometimes the brides are hidden baba says i have to search children at amritvela where they are they are hiding in some corner near shanti stamp with their shawls covered so that others should not see whether their eyes are closed or open <laughs> sometimes they are hiding in their rooms <laughs> they are very shy <laughs> so baba has to seek them where they are they are lost <coughs> baba says come out come out of all your shyness the bridegroom has come the bridegroom is here oh ye all come om shanti